In this lab, we will be completing filtrated sample preparation, also known as FASP. The purpose of this lab is to digest the proteins in our sample for proteomics, such as analysis using mass spectrometry. FASP allows us to solubilize whole or fractionated protein samples, digest the proteins with trypsin, and analyze the resulting peptides by mass spectrometry. Some of the important reagents we will be using in this assay are urea, DTT, IAA, also known as iodoacetic acid, and trypsin. Urea is a powerful protein denaturant, as it disrupts the non-covalent bonds in proteins. This allows it to increase the solubility of some proteins. DTT is a reducing agent. Once it's oxidized, it forms a stable six-membered ring with an internal disulfide bond. DTT is frequently used to reduce the disulfide bonds of proteins and to prevent intramolecular and intermolecular disulfide bonds from forming between cysteine residues. Iodoacetic acid, or IAA, is an irreversible inhibitor of all cysteine peptidases. Iodoacetic acid alkylates the catalytic cysteine residue is able to modify SH groups to prevent the reformation of disulfide bonds after the reduction of cysteine residues to cysteine during protein sequencing. Trypsin is a serine protease that catalyzes the hydrolysis of peptide bonds. Trypsin predominantly cleaves proteins at the carboxyl side, or the C-terminal side, of the amino acids lysine and arginine, except when either are bound to a C-terminal proline. In order to carry out the FAST protocol, the first step is to add a mixture of 8 molar urea and 10 millimolar DTT into 50 micrograms of your protein sample. A final volume of up to 200 microliters is important to adhere to because the FASPs cannot accommodate for more volume. The sample was then briefly vortexed and rocked at room temperature for 45 minutes. The sample was then transferred to a FASP filter and centrifuged at 14,000 G for 3 minutes at room temperature. Performing these centrifugations at room temperature is important because urea can precipitate and come out of solution if it is at a cold temperature. After this, 100 microliters of fresh urea was added to the filter, and it was then centrifuged at 14,000 G for 3 minutes at room temperature. The reason why we need to perform a lot of urea washes is to be sure that the proteins are efficiently solubilized. The flow through was then discarded. 10 microliters of iodoacetic acid, or IAA, and 90 microliters of urea was then added to the sample. The sample was then incubated for 5 minutes in the dark. IAA is a light-sensitive molecule, which is why it needs to be kept in the dark. The sample was then centrifuged at 14,000 G for 3 minutes at room temperature. 50 microliters of urea was then added to the filter. It was then centrifuged at 14,000 G for 3 minutes at room temperature, twice as a wash step. The flow-through was then discarded after this wash. 50 microliters of 50 nanomolar ammonium bicarbonate was then added to the filter. It was then centrifuged at 14,000 G for 3 minutes. 100 microliters of trypsin was then added to the filter. It was vortexed briefly, then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 4 hours. Incubating at a warm temperature allows the activity of trypsin to be sped up. The activity of trypsin is optimal at pH 8. Ammonium bicarbonate forms a mildly alkaline buffer when it is dissolved in water, and it is commonly used to buffer trypsin digestions. Ammonium bicarbonate can also be removed by lyophilization easily. After this incubation, the filter was then transferred to a new and clean collection tube. 100 microliters of 0.1% formic acid was then added to the filter. Formic acid will be used to stop the digestion. It was then centrifuged at 14,000 G for 7 minutes, twice. The sample was then dried on a lyophilizer until a desired volume was achieved. The type of lyophilizer you see in this video is a larger one meant for larger volumes of sample, but smaller ones that can accommodate microcentrifuge tubes also exist. A lyophilizer evaporates excess solvent from a solution. The sample is frozen, placed in a vacuum, 
Then the water evaporates into vapors. The vacuum allows water to evaporate off of the surface of the frozen sample. The samples will then be stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius until the mass spectrometry analysis can be carried out.